Today I'm going to show you step by step how you can take your Gerber files and turn them into a PCB on your CNC. And we're going to do it all with a free software FlatCam. I'm going to walk you through and explain all the steps and settings you need. Once you have your Gerber file for your PCB, download and open up FlatCam. This guide is going to cover all you need to create a single-sided PCB. Inside of FlatCam, let's start off with a little bit of housekeeping. Go to Edit and choose Preferences. It's very important that you select the unit type that your CNC is expecting. If your CNC expects metric values, choose millimeters. And if it expects imperial values, select inches. Next is the graphic engine. If you're experiencing any lags or delays when working with a plot area, you can switch to the legacy 2D engine. And finally, if these menu bars at the sides disappear, you can get them back on screen by selecting layout. Now that's it with the housekeeping. Let's start working on the PCB. First, we're going to start to mill the tracks. This is a three-step process. We're going to open a Gerber file. From that file, we're going to create a geometry object. And finally, from the geometry object, we're going to create a CNC job. Go to File, Open, Open Gerber, and open up the top layer file. You can zoom using the scroll wheel on the mouse, and you can move the whole area around by holding down the right mouse button. You can also move the position of the object by right-clicking once and selecting Move. A very handy tip in FlatCam is to read the status bar. It often tells you what to do. It tells me to click on a start point. So let's click and release the mouse button. Move the mouse and click where you want to place it. Note, the 0, zero position is going to be the home point on your CNC. You can also right click and select edit. Then this part of the menu becomes active. You can add paths, tracks and so on. If you're editing an excellent object, this part becomes active. And this part is for when you're editing a geometry object. It can be a handy feature, but it's not necessary for this tutorial. Click on the file you opened and go to the selected tab. This will show you all the options you need to mill the tracks, or in other words, isolate the tracks from the rest of the PCB. For now, we only need to focus on the top part of the tab. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Next PCB. Once you have milled your PCB and want more of them, you can just upload your Gerber files to Next PCB and have them delivered straight to you. Next PCB lets you do a free trial order for up to 10 high quality double layered PCB for zero dollars. They are a real PCB manufacturer with over 15 years of experience and a lot of certificates so you can feel safe and trust their products. They can also offer the entire service of sourcing your components, making your PCB and assembly the PCB for you. Check them out next time you need a high quality PCB. Sign up with a link in the description below and you could get an additional $5 coupon. If you have a more complex layout, the multicolor option can be helpful if you want to inspect any tracks. But let's focus on the isolation routing. If you hover over any of the text in FlatCam, it will show a description. First up is the tool diameter. It's most common to use a V-shaped bit when milling PCBs. You can choose to use a special bit for PCB milling, or you can simply buy a common V-carve bit. The special bit is about 10 times more expensive, and the results are very similar. Just don't buy a too fragile bit, like this one. We usually use a 0.2 millimeter tip with about 30 degrees. It produces a fine track, and the bit has a bit more mass, so it doesn't break too easily. When selecting the tool diameter, you must remember that the deeper a V-bit cuts, 
the wider it gets. Luckily, Flatcam has a built-in tool for calculating this. Go to Tool and click Calculator. We're using a bit diameter of 0.2 millimeters, and its angle is 30 degrees. Finally, for Cut Set, that's the depth of the cut, we usually cut about 0.1 millimeter deep. This depth will break through the copper on most copper clad boards. Here are three examples of cut depth. At 0.15 millimeters, we're cutting through the copper and into the fiberglass. At 0.1 millimeter, we're also cutting through the copper and just a tiny bit into the fiberglass. And at 0.08 millimeters, we're actually not cutting through all the copper. So this is not a usable PCB. Copy the tool diameter and go back to the selected tab and paste the value. The number of passes is the number of times you want your CNC to extend the isolation path. On this PCB, I made two examples. This one only has one pass around the tracks, while this one has four passes. And there's no copper left between the pads, and it will be much easier to solder and avoid solder bridges. If you only need one pass because you're going to apply a solder mask, then click Generate Isolation Geometry. The red tracks are where the CNC you want to cut. What happened now is that Flatcam generated a geometry object. If you click on the Project tab, you can see it here and go back to the selected tab to see the settings again. If we zoom in, we can see that it's very likely to leave copper between the pads at this area, as it's too big for the bit to remove it all. We could also see that on the test PCB we made. So I'm gonna go back to the project tab and delete this geometry. If you're fine with results, you don't have to do this but I want to create more isolation between the tracks and the rest of the copper. Click on the Gerber file again and open the selected tab. We commonly use three to four passes, so I'm going to set it to four. Pass overlap is how much the next pass should overlap the previous one. 10% is a minimum you should use. But in this case, it's important that the copper between the pads is cleared. Let's do a test and click Generate. If you zoom in, there are no extra cut paths between the pads. You can choose Edit and add manual paths. But let's fix this by changing the overlap value. Go to Project and delete all the geometry objects. The reason why there are so many geometry objects is because each pass generated its own object. But we can change this. Select the Gerber file and go to the selected tab again. If you check the combine box, all passes will be combined into one file. For this PCB, I found out that I need about 45% overlap. So let's type in 45 and hit generate. First of all, if you check the projects tab, we now only have one geometry object. And if you zoom in, we now have extra cut paths between the pads. We're now happy with this result. So go back to the selected tab. We need to tell Flatcam how deep we want the cut to be. As you can see, when we calculated tool diameter, we were happy with a cut depth about 0.1 millimeter. Since it's cutting below the surface or the home point, we need to use a negative value of 0.1. Multi depth is for when you're cutting through thicker materials and wanted the CNC to cut the same path multiple times just a bit deeper every time. As we're only cutting through the thin copper at this point, we can ignore this option for now. Said travel is how high above the surface the bit should travel when not cutting. 2 millimeters is fine for an even surface like a PCB. Tool change is when you're using multiple tools in one operation. We're not going to do that in this tutorial. End move is important when you're using a CNC with a shorter set axis. This is the height the bit will travel to upwards from the board when it's finished milling. So make sure it doesn't hit the top of your CNC. I like to set this to only about 5 millimeters. 
and we're going to use the XY feed rate of 120 millimeters and 60 millimeters for the Z. You can set it lower for testing, or most CNC software also allows you to change the feed rate when milling. Click Generate CNC Job. These are the actual machine codes or G code that a CNC is going to run. You can click the View CNC code if you want to verify it. Click Save CNC code and place it in a folder. That's the steps you need to isolate the tracks. Next up is the drill holes. That's going to be your through holes and mounting holes. This is only a two step process as we're not going to create any geometry objects. Click File, Open, Open Xlon and select the drill file. In the selected tab, you now have the options for the Xlon. Here we need to set the cut Z. That's going to be the depth of the holes. You should always use a waste board under your PCB so that you're not going to damage the bed of the CNC. You want the drill to go all the way through the PCB and a bit into the waste material. So 2 millimeters is enough for most boards. Again, this is a negative number. Travel Z remains the same as for the isolation tracks. 2 millimeters. The drill bits are often a bit longer than the V bits. So I'm going to have the end move Z at 0 0.5 and a feed rate at about 300. Set the spindle speed if needed. The CNC we're using for PCBs has a fixed speed for the spindle. And click Generate Drill G Code. Check that it looks good and save the CNC code. If the plot area becomes cluttered, you can go back to the Project tab and disable plots that you don't need to see. Finally, we're going to generate a job for cutting out the PCB. If you do have a board outline file, you can open that. Go to File, Open, Open Gerber and select the file with a board outline. If you do not have an outline file, Flatcam can still create the board cutout. Open Tool and select Cutout PCB. Select the object to be cut out if you have the board outline file. Otherwise, I recommend using the tracks file. We're going to use an end mill to cut out the board, so we don't need to calculate the tool diameter. I'm going to use a 1mm end mill. The cut Z or the depth is going to be negative 1.8 millimeters. You might want to measure your copper clad board to be sure and add a small cut margin so actually make it through the entire board. We're going to have the CNC work its way down to this depth in multiple passes to make it easier. Margin is how much space you want between your PCB and the cutouts. And gaps are the small tabs you can choose to leave on the PCB so that it will not fall out during the cutouts. If you're using double-sided tape to hold the PCB in place, you may not need tabs. But I'm using clamps, so I definitely need the tabs. Anywhere between 2 and 3 mm gap size is usual enough. I'd rather add more tabs than bigger tabs. You can let Flatcam automatically create gaps. LR is left and right, TB is top and bottom. 4 is going to create tabs on the top, bottom, left and right. Or you can even have more tabs. If you want Flatcam to place the gaps, click on Generate Freeform if you have a non-rectangular cutout, and Rectangular if it's actually rectangular. In most cases, this is a good enough option. But if you need to place the gaps yourself, you can do that as well. Click on the Generate Manual Geometry button. Make sure the cutout object is selected in the drop-down window. And then Manual Add Bridge Gaps and add the gaps to the plot area. Try placing the gaps on straight lines and avoid corners to make it easier. Go to the Project tab, select the Cutout Geometry and click the selected tab. Check Cut Set, Multi Depth and Travel Set. And set the End Move Set to 0 0.5 so that the spindle won't hit the top of the CNC. Finally, Set the feed rate and click Generate CNC Job Object and save the CNC code.
We now have all the CNC jobs we need for the tracks, isolation, the drilling, and a cutout of the board. So we're actually done with flat cam and can move on to the CNC. We're going to use the 3018 CNC and candle or Gerber control to operate the CNC. Before you start the CNC, there are two crucial steps that you must do. One is the centering of the V bits. This needs to be accurate. And number two is to create a height map by probing the actual copper clad board. For the centering of the V bits, I usually use the camera on my cell phone and zoom in and try turning the spindle to make sure the tip of the V bit is in one place. It's very important that it has no wiggle room. In your CNC software, start by loading in the tracks isolation file and start the milling. After the tracks are milled, load the drilling file and drill the holes. And finally, do the board cutouts. We strongly recommend applying a solder mask. See this video where we compare a UV solder mask to Dynamask. Hope you liked the video. See you next time.